Hello guys, trying something different, my face down here. Welcome to a new video where we're going to answer a load of viewer questions and then open the legendary trophy. See what we get. When I just mentioned the legendary trophy, my girlfriend piped in with, uh, what did you say? Ooh. So we're going to be opening a legendary trophy. Ooh. Thank you. You can go now. You've got it. Uh, so that's something we'll do at the end of the video, which I've been given. I definitely didn't deserve it, but uh, I, I think the kingdom might not want me to go, which is touching. So we have the king's legendary trophy here. But our seven passports. We will see what we get in these. But I like doing these videos time to time. When I watch series for different games, mainly FIFA, I really enjoy these uh, these videos where we talk about, go through viewer questions and answer them. So I can try and do it as well. So let's start from, I've got a few comments from recent videos, which I may not have answered, but I've definitely thought about, and I'd like to run through them now. So if, uh, if you hear your name, thanks for posting. Let's start from the beginning. John R says, you've got a good personality for this and some real swag and a great facial structure. Well, he didn't say that, but he, he did say the rest. But the camera box is too small for the sake of immersion. A little quiet background music while you talk. No, if no action would be a really nice addition too. Otherwise, it feels a bit lonely. Well, thanks very much, John, for the feedback. I'm trying to try something new. So instead of being... Hold on, can I do it? Instead of being... No, that's wrong. Instead of being over yonder and small or even like this instead we're like this so what <clears throat> excuse me if you're new to the video so you've been watching a while what's better is this better the bigger face more immersive thing or is it better to be on the top with the sponsor and of course remember those sponsors pay a lot of money recently we were sponsored by dressing gowns and i cannot tell you the amount of money dressing but gowns pay me I wouldn't call it a house coat, no, of course not. It's a dressing gown. House coat's a separate sponsorship deal. Don't cut me out of this. Uh, so anyway, let me know if this is better or you think it should be better with a sponsorship malarkey. Also, I do think, I, I do put background music on, but I don't really listen to all the videos again. Is the background music actually showing? Please let me know if not, and I will refind the background music and make sure it's there as I frantically go and find more gems. I'm still going through the gem mining phase. Most of the time my girlfriend asks me a question. What do I respond by saying? I'm just mining gems. Yeah, hold on. Let me just find a new gem deposit. Oh, look, as soon as we find one, another gem is needed. <clears throat> and then when you say action, I mean, guys, this, this is surely action, right? This is what you come to rock content for, action. Look, I'm attacking a barbarian fort. It's all going off. Anyway, so John, I've tried to implement the changes suggested. Let me know what you think, guys. Zeitgeist Tom said, of completely of his own accord, Hey Greg, would you recommend doing a restart with Archers? Well, as you know, I've done a restart account with Archers, and I think my very firm assessment would be no. No, I would not. It has been very difficult to fight. Okay, I've got a bit unlucky with crystal chests. I have... Uh, well, first I need to take my uh, equipment off the booty, but this is the best set I have at the moment. And it's not great. The reason why inventory is so good early on, aside from the fact you basically get a cracked, low-tier legendary commander in Sun Tzu for free, is because of this thing here. Lost Canyon. Shop. Eternal Knight, unless so, Shio's return. Two legendary blueprints, which you'll get in KVK1 for, well, for this, not for free, but... For the low cost of no financial investment and no resources, no gems spent on the egg event. It's really a huge deal. You get nothing of the sort for archers. Also, for infantry, you get, if I can show, if you get lucky in the crystal chests, which I have not as of yet, but I've heard some people somewhere are lucky. You get this bad boy. Where is it? The Hope Cloak. Hope Cloak is a fantastic piece of equipment available for just a low cost of 60 legendary resources, which you get in crystal chests. It's certainly the best thing you get in crystal chests. Milky Way is not bad, but it's not part of the, the best set for infantry, which Hope Cloak debatably is. So 
that's three pieces of equipment, that's half the set. Okay, the Shio's Return isn't actually in the ultimate set, but it's certainly good enough for KVK1 if you're looking to, to do something. So infantry makes so much more sense than archers. Also, as we go into KVK2, the commanders you get new are uh, Saladin, Alexander, Constantine, Genghis Khan, Tamiris, Edward. Maybe there's some more I missed. Basically, the best ones, well, the best ones probably Tamiris, Edward, if you're rallying. But if you're anything other than an 80 million rally lead who's come back from Season of Congress, you're going to want to ignore all of them, apart from maybe Alexander, maybe Saladin. The best one's Alexander. So again, we're going to KVK2, best commander's infantry, in my opinion. So the fact that I'm archers means I'm basically going to have to skip the third KVK cycle. And then we get into KVK3, where now you can use all the Season of Conquest guys. The first wheel is cavalry. The first wheel, you can pretty much max your Nevsky out, who's probably still the best commander in the game. If you haven't been using your heads on anyone until then, or if you've rationed the heads you've used, maybe you've just done one... Uh, one YSG or one KVT2 commander, so infantry and cavalry have such big advantages over archers. I'm not upset I did the archer challenge, I am curious whether or not it was a good idea to do Thutmose instead of just running Kusanogi and YSG. Someone asked me for advice today and I basically said, and I think Thutmose was a mistake. Excuse me, lovely bit of whiskey there. <clears throat> Problem with these videos, a lot of talking as you can imagine. I'd be curious to know, once I get Kusanogi to 60 and put him in this set, whether or not he's better than, than 5 2 one, one foot modes. I ex suspect he might be, to be brutally honest. But anyway, archers are good late game, sure. When you've got Zhu Liang, you've got the new guys coming out, Herman and the new guy whose name I forget. But I'm sure Herman Prime will be cracked, because the Prime Commanders tend to be cracked. So archers definitely are viable for a viable troop type, especially late game, but early on they're difficult, even though most people and their mother are running infantry in KVK1, they're still pretty squishy, they don't have the they don't have the last ability of Richard on Charles, and Sun Tzu's still really good, okay, but most will always trade well against Sun Tzu, but Sun Tzu's still really good, so I would say, and my long wind answer to this zeitgeist is, no, I wouldn't recommend doing a restart with, with archers, but it has been pretty fun, I like doing it, it's nice to do something different. Also, I hate El Cid, which kind of <laughs> takes away half of the early game Archer Legendary Commanders, which might not be a bad thing, so I don't put heads in it. Anyway, I'd recommend not doing it unless, like me, you fancy doing something different for a bit of fun. Oof, a bit more whiskey. Cheers to you all. Let's go to Kale Emery next. He says, hey man, happy to come across this video and subscribe. Thank you, Kale Emery. Oh, I do. Can't wait to watch your other videos as well. Hope you have done. I'm super impressed by you getting so far ahead as S free to play. I see I have much to learn from you. Okay, this isn't just tickling my balls. There's more coming here. I'm also about to start my stopping vaping journey. Have you had any tips for success? This is going to sound ridiculous, but my main tip for success in the not vaping journey, don't vape. Anyone who's not vaped or smoked doesn't understand how hard that is to do. Today I woke up and I thought, oh, I'm just going to vape. I'm just going to do it. It's been six days. I'm just going to do it. I told my girlfriend, yep, I'm going to start vaping again today. And she was like, okay, well, don't. We had a long discussion where I heard what she said. And then I thought to myself, yeah, I'll just go buy one anyway and just lie about it. But then I told her, I was basically, long story short, is I still haven't vaped. It's been six and a half days now and it's been difficult. All I want to do is do it, but it's so bad for you. I know how bad it is for you. It's such a waste of money. In fact, I've been spending more on my other account out of the pleasure of not vaping. I've been like, well, if I've got this money spare, I may as well put it into rock because I'd waste it anywhere. I just th literally go up in smoke. So <laughs> the thing about how to not vape is just don't buy a vape. Don't do it. If you think you're going to do it, that's fine. If you give up in your head, that's fine. Just don't actually buy one. Because if you don't buy one, I've given up in my head so many times and I've yet to buy one. I'll probably relapse and I'll probably be on stream smoke in a way, but... I don't want to be. I definitely won't be, honey. Don't you worry about that. I don't want to be. I would say it's a very, very, very difficult thing to do. I didn't appreciate when I've told friends previously to give up smoking just how difficult it was once you're hooked on the nicotine. I've tried sugar-free, uh, sugar-free uh, nicotine gum, which and it's, you know, I don't think it's been good for me because it's just kept the nicotine in my system. But it did stop me vaping. So I would say, good luck on your journey, my friend. Please come in and let me know how you're doing, because uh, camaraderie is everything when you're doing something like this. 
Anyway, then we talk a lot about migration. SSC Leon. I know who Leon is. Says, I think you should stay after KV Kill and we will spend as migrating the kingdom. Luda says, migration is a must in this game. This isn't your typical game. It's fun and expensive. The only thing I would ask is, what are you looking for in Alliance? Are you finding it in the kingdom you're in? Well, I'm looking for fun. I'm looking for spenders. We have a lot of fun. I really like 3259, but we, we don't have many spenders. Henry Walker says, migration is a must. Gold chests are a must for free to play. But mainly losing KVK1, which we have done. The kingdom is bound to fail. I suggest moving to a KVK1 winner kingdom. Gives them a bigger chance of winning KVK2. Then on giving you a bigger chance to be able to transition to Season of Conquest better, in my opinion. And you know what? They're all really good opinions. I, I'm still torn on the matter. Because I really like it here. But I also really like the idea of playing with 80 spenders who buy 20 gold chests a day. I am. I have made a decision in that I am going to be staying for the foreseeable future. I'm definitely going to go into KVK2 in this kingdom. There is a chance I then migrate into a kingdom. Let's have a look. Uh, let's find it out. So we have preparation season. Migrate into a kingdom in the early 3300s there's a 90 day thing so as long as the kingdom's not 90 days older than me i'm able to migrate in so i can basically do kvk2 once on this account and then even though i hate it do it again with the passports i've already bought so i'm definitely going to be staying for the majority if not all of kvk2 here maybe things will be great maybe we'll win easily and get loads of spenders in which case i'll be delighted to stay if not or even if i feel the account needs a bit more of a boost I'll just migrate back and do KVK2 again, but I hope it's not to 3259's disappointment that I will be staying for the foreseeable future. I've had a few lovely offers. Thank you for the guys who've kindly con uh, contacted me and asked me to come to their kingdom. I've really looked into it and I've really thought about it, but the more I think about it, I do like it here. Okay, there are problems. There are problems with every kingdom, but I may as well start KVK2 here and then think about migrating back to do it again to get some more power. And also thank you to the king who has twisted my arm in somewhat with this legendary trophy which we will probably be crap but we will see at the end of the video so migration we've sorted it for now we're staying for now i'd say we're 50 50 on whether we're going to migrate back to do kvk2 again towards the end of our current kvk2 we shall see raza 1831 says the content can be better if there's more action than more talking throughout the video anyway keep it up Thanks, Raza. I, you know, I agree. I think we should have some more action. I did a bloody action filled video the other day and then I made a stupid mistake and deleted it, which was really annoying because I did about half an hour of fighting on it. I mean, not great fighting with 34 ish million kill points, which is why we still don't deserve that legendary trophy. Whew, but I'm glad to have it nonetheless. But we fought quite a lot, so, you know, I'm a, I'll try and do some more videos of fighting. I'm sure they'll be fighting when zones 6 and 7 are unsealed, and I will do my best. I do a lot of fighting on stream, but I will do my best to do it on video. There's something a little different. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Rad. I'm, listen, guys, I, I've thick, I'm thick, I'm thick, I'm a little bit thick, but I have thick shoulders. If you have constructive criticism like Razza does, like John R did, please do feel free to put it there. I'm very much new to this. What are we at? We're about 800 subscribers. So we're growing. We're growing really fast and really well, but... Yeah, I'm still new to this whole game, been doing like three, four months. So if anyone's got any ideas, suggestions, please feel free to shout them in. And I'd be the only too happy to listen and adopt anything that's advisable. Final comment comes from a good friend, the Prince, who is a, a fountain of wisdom, I must say. So we're talking about what to spend my gems on next. If we see, I'm still like, today, what am I doing? I'm doing one guy, one guy doing fort. Four guys farming, which I've been doing since this morning. Let's have a look how many gems I've farmed today. Because this will be a pretty typical day. Uh, let's find some gems. Actually, easy way of doing it. You here. So, gems today we have... 430, uh, 900, 1350... About 1,800 gems a day. I'd say we usually get about 3,000 gems a day. About 8 o'clock, I usually get like, no, I'm fucking bored of this now. There's too much gem farming. So we usually get about 3,000 gems a day. So I really am putting in the time to get the gems up here. And I asked the other day what I should be spending my gems on, whether it should be VIP, whether it should be the wheel, whether it should be uh, the, uh, the egg event for new equipment, or, or going to tier 5. And Prince answers that 
fantastically. If you have water borrow, push VIP 12 direct. Well, look, this was before we got the more than gems event. We have the IP 12 now. Fantastic news. So not only do we have the extra gold header day, we have another 5% defense and a 15% research speed. So things are looking up for us. Uh, yeah, etc. Keep pushing gems crazy at least till 25,000 gems after you max your VIP 12. Doing that, my friend, don't you worry. And divide into two halves in the days, in the two days time of more than gems time when it will. Because I think what Prince is trying to say is that make sure you have 50,000 gems at least for the next more than gems, which makes perfect sense to me. No wheel, bro. You're playing as free to play. Then you must know your limits when you're completely free to play. You are like, <laughs> you're like fighting tanks with a shovel. And I completely agree with that again. You know my thoughts on the wheel. I think it's shite, to be honest. Like, you sometimes you'll get lucky and get the eight. But most of the time, you'll be spending 10,000 gems to get, I don't know, like 10 commander heads. It's just not a good ratio. Maybe you get 12, 13. It's really not a good ratio. So I might do the wheel to the first spin for YSG. I, I'll have to do the wheel when we go into KBK3 to get the whichever commander I want, whether that's, infant, whether that's cavalry or archer. I've yet to decide, but I'm going to ignore all KBK2 wheels for sure. Now, point number four. Maybe you think me crazy, but I still advise pushing till VIP14 in my opinion. T T5 doesn't matter if you don't have massive commanders. You know what, Prince? I completely agree again. Like We could push tier five. You wouldn't could push tier five tomorrow, but I, I could drop money. I could put in like five grand here. Again, I couldn't do that. Now I think about it, but theoretically, we could get there tomorrow. And the best commanders we'd have would be a Thutmos, a YSG. You know, I wouldn't, I'd have tier five units, but not the commanders to fight with it, which is why I really like the idea, if not the principle and practice of getting to VIP 14. Getting that extra gold head a day. Getting three gold heads a day before pushing into tier five, basically saying, yeah, tier five is good, but you know, tier four with good commanders is better than tier five with a five, two, one, one thutmose. So again, there's an argument for getting the VIP there from Prince. In the wartime, don't swarm cities, only if the com city completely weak like chips. Again, I agree. Something I'm really keen to avoid and don't like it about myself, but I... I don't care less about dead troops in KBK 2 and 3 and onwards, especially Season of Conquest where you got half of them back. But I really think taking deads in KBK 1 stunts the growth of the account a lot, unless you've been really investing. Once I find a gem deposit, I will show you why. So, you know, we've, we've done some fighting. We've done... How much, how much fighting have we done? We've got 3,500 kills or sev wounded. It's decent for my level. I'd say I've... I'm satisfied, if not happy, with the amount of fighting we've done. We've got 43,000 dead troops. It's not much, but there's 43,000 that I could have lying around. How many will I get back? So it's mainly cavalry. But the only reason I have a problem with that, I don't care about dead troops in and of themselves, is that my troop details, I now have... Okay, well, I have loads of guys in the hospital, but I basically don't have a full set of infantry. I don't have a full set of cavalry, and I only, well, I do have a full set of archers, so I focus on that. I really want to make sure I have 250k of each infantry and cavalry. After then, happy to throw away troops for kill points, but until then, it really inhibits my barbarian farming, my troop going. Like, when I go for forts with people, I send less, uh, less cavalry than other people. Here we go. So I sent 178,000 here. Okay, well, this one, this one I got to send both. But if they just have the cavalry, I can't send a full march. So I get fewer rewards. Like, it really does scale. And I agree with uh, with Prince here that you really have to limit the dead troops you're taking in KVK1 as a free-to-play player. Just set your account back too much. Two, three onwards. Yeah, kill them all. But for now, make sure. I think I've learned to make sure you have a full march available. But you never know when you need it either. And finally, number six, fantastic point. Use Ethel Fledge. She's the best commander for free to play, not just in KVK1, but in all seasons. You need to know how and when to use her, but maxing her completely. Also from the museum, she must be max. So as a quick point, the museum, if you're a newer player, the museum is something that opens up now in KVK3, and I shall show you what it does. It gives a boost to older commanders. When we say older commanders, we're talking... KVK 2 and before. The main reason for this is the Season of Congress commanders are just so much more powerful and it's trying to 
artificially raise the uh, raise the level of the earlier commanders so they can compete on some level. So here is the museum, I believe. Here is Ethelfled, for instance. A double relic Ethelfled gets troop attack 25%, march speed plus 15%. Really quite good, right? And you get for YSG, you get, I've got a double relic here, for archer defense 20%, skill damage 5%. Again, really good. Minamoto, we'd have to worry about that, but it's one of the really good relics. Martel's is a good relic. And the other one I'm going to consider for my account, which I obviously don't have here, is Thutmose. I need to unlock it. Thutmose will give you Archer Attack plus 25%, Archer Health plus 20%. So even when we go into Season of Conquest, getting Thutmose unlocked with this is really good. Like, a 20% Archer Health boost is fantastic. It really puts Thutmose up like he's never going to compete with Boudicca. He's definitely not going to be the same level as Herman Prime or Zugliang, but that really does give him a big old boost. And Prince is saying, focus on Ethelfled. And Ethelfled is fantastic. She is the best free-to-play commander because everyone gets access to her. Everyone can make use of her. Everyone can... Eventually, she's really good with Trajan. It's sort of a 7th March buffer if you're spending on the Crystal Tech or if you're really focusing that. In Season of Conquest, like, she's fantastic at that. Early game, she's really good with Richard. Okay, it's not going to be an issue for me. Really good with Martell, even. She's good at just hanging around there. Her skills, which we don't haven't really looked at on this account, but if anyone... Everyone has this, you can have a look at it. Like, she does some damage, but... Attack, defense, and health reduction is fantastic. Something about counterattack as well, blah, blah, blah. But this... Extra damage to troops than inflicted by slowdown, but it is mainly this. Attack, defense, and health reduction to a small uh, a small web of troops is really quite relevant. So I agree with Prince. I basically agree with everything Prince has said there. Fantastic post, Prince. And fantastic post to everyone. Thank you so much to everyone for commenting on the video. If you, uh, if you do comment on further videos, I will always do one like this. I really enjoy interacting with the people. Those of you who are kind enough to share me both your time in supporting the channel and... Well, I suppose your time again in commenting on videos, so I will always interact. I love videos like this, so I hope this has been of interest to people. If I haven't answered your questions, sorry, please do post some. I'm only too happy to get to them. Well, I believe the only way to end a video where I talk about Legendary Chest is to open the Legendary Chest. In fact, before we do that, I wanted to do one quick thing. I wanted to point out top guys in our kingdom. Booley, top guy. He's a leader with king penguin and reaper so busy but he's always got time to do these uh he's always got time to lead he puts so much time top guy nova what a genius at flagging he is 27 million power 168 million kill points you can't look past that prime 35 million power 267 million kill points in kvk one this dude is legitimately a beast he's got max minamoto with fantastic gear it's a pleasure to fight along retronics is a really good fighter as well with his pyrrhus max Free to play Ahsoka, he's got more kill points than me, bastard. But this guy might have a few more kill points than me, look at 811,000 kill points, yeah he's come back from an older thing, but this, this dude, free to play farm, we've got all the free to play farmers here, they're all legit. King Penguin of course, our leader, with the tier 5 and the 420 million kill points, all the free to play farmers here, but a Big shout out to these guys. They've made playing in 3259 really enjoyable. And I must say a big shout out to 3258, 3257 and 325, uh, 3260. It's been a really enjoyable KVK at the end. Like the fact that 3258 basically said, yeah, this is too easy for us. Let's fight another kingdom. It really made the last day, last two days worth of fighting really enjoyable. I like that 60 tried to push here. Like, the, clearly, the, the ranking of power goes 58, so much higher than everyone else. 59, 60, and 57 are probably quite similar. But we, we get smashed by 58, 60 gets smashed by us. 57 and 60 will be an interesting fight. Let's see how that transpires. But it's been a really enjoyable, well-fought KVK in the right vein. Not much toxicity, despite a few civil wars. So, fair play to that. On my main account, we just had a camp civil war, so, like, Harrison is stark. So anyway, big shout out to the guys who I've mentioned. They've made being in this kingdom really enjoyable and really good fighters. Without further ado, let's open this legendary chest. Legendary trophy. Thanks to the king, Fooly. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. I definitely didn't deserve it, but I may have put the strength to 3259 a little bit. I know these guys are looking for migrants. If you're looking to migrate to KVK2, 
just get in touch with me and I'll put you in the right person. I'm in no way involved in the process. Let's see what we get in the legendary trophy. Okay, a load of shit. Well, that isn't too bad. The gems are nice, obviously. No one cares about the stone. The speed ups aren't that good. What is it? Speed ups? That's 40s. A day and a half speed ups. A big thing is the advanced army expansion. That is massive for us. I must say, I'm quite excited about that. I have been fighting with. I make sure I always use an expansion to fight with, but I fight with the 25% all the time because I, they're easy to get from the Alliance shop. Obviously, I've spent some on passports recently, but apart from passports, I only really spend on the basic army expansion. The advanced army expansion is difficult to get as free to play, so I'm delighted for that. I will save that for a hotly contested KVK2 fight so I can really make use of having more troops. Hopefully, I'll stop throwing away troops in battle until then. Anyway, this has been a longer video. As I said, guys, please let me know what you think of the head in the bottom left. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I've certainly enjoyed making it. Please feel free to smash those comments on the videos. Always feel free to subscribe. Once I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll be on top of the world. Sorry, that wasn't a Nazi salute. That was me saying I'll be on top of the world. Until then, my friends, it's been a wonderful time recording this with you all. What are doing more? Peace out. Love to you all. Thanks for the questions. And to the legendary chess foolie.